So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, simply proving that uh, mean independence uh, or our notion of mean independence implies this so-called thing called uncorrelatedness. So uh, recall, okay, recall that our notion of mean independence, right, mean independence is when uh, it means that uh, the expected value of y given x, this conditional expectation, is just merely equal to the expectation with respect to y. So we say that um, x and y are mean independent if this uh, holds true. Now, uh, just to get back on this notion of independence, well, we have said that um, full independence, full independence, this uh, bigger umbrella, or this much stricter sort of uh, notion, okay? Full independence is when you can have a, a joint uh, uh, PDF and you can break it up fully into just the product of the marginals, right? Of Y, right? Say you have that, okay? You can break it up fully into that. Then full independence uh, implies um, our notion of, uh, let me just, write this better. So this is f, x, y, uh, x, y. Then you can break it up into that, right? x here, y here. So this implies mean independence. So when something is fully independent or independent, uh, two variables are independent, then they are also mean independent, okay? And uh, the mean independence, uh, um, uh, assumption is that the expected value of y given x is equal to the expected value of y, as said uh, above. And lastly, this thing, as we will prove today, implies uh, uncorrelatedness. Uncorrelatedness, which just means that the covariance of x and y are, is equal to zero, right? So that's what we're trying to prove. Okay, so um, recall, so prove, okay. So we need to prove that the covariance of X and Y is zero when mean independence happens to be the case. So uh, the covariance of X and Y can be written as the expected value of X minus the expected value of X times Y minus the expected value of Y, okay? Then uh, we, what we do is we apply apply the law, okay, the law of iterated expectations, okay, expectations. And what we get is that this is going to be equal to, we condition on x, expected value of the expected value of x minus expected value of x, okay, uh, my, uh, whoops, not minus, times y minus expected value of y, Let's just make that clear, given x, okay? That's what we have there. Let me just fix that, okay? So we have those things there. Then uh, clearly, this is with respect to x, this is with respect to x, so that's not gonna change when we condition on x. So we can take it before the expectations operator, that one. So that's expected value of x minus expected value of x, right? Expected value now of y minus expected value of y given x, okay? So we're gonna be left with that. Then uh, if we spread around the conditional expectation, we get x minus expected value of x, right? Times, okay, expected value of y given uh, x, okay, minus the expected value of y, right? So we have that there, okay? Then what we have here now is, again, by mean independence, okay, by mean independence, we have that uh, the expected value of y given x is just equal to the expected value of y. So, we get expected value of uh, x minus expected value of x 
times this expected value of y, given x, that's just expected value of y under mean independence, minus expected value of y. And you see where this is going. This is equal to 0. Hence, the entire thing now is equal to 0. Therefore, the covariance of x and y is equal to 0. And that ends our proof. So we have seen that mean independence, in this case, now implies uncorrelatedness. Now, there is a special case. Um, uh, you might ask, well, does the converse hold true? Okay, And the answer is no, not all the time. But it does hold true in the case of a normal. So the converse holds true. Uncorrelatedness implies mean independence for a normal. But if it's not necessarily a normal, then it's not always the case. So that's a quick proof on uh, mean independence implying uncorrelatedness. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.